the whole idea of sin has virtually disappeared from our American culture. Many, many people don't have any idea about sin or believe in sin or the consequences of sin. But one thing we can be assured of, it has not disappeared from God's Word because all sin is serious. The Bible's very, very explicit about that. It doesn't make any difference what the sin is. In God's eyes, it's serious because it's breaking God's law. 1 John 3, 4. All sin is lawlessness. So sin is, is abhorrent. It's, rep, it's reprehensible in God's sight, regardless of what our society or culture says. He still views it as the very worst. Sin is a spiritual and a moral disease. It's a malignancy because it can spread and affect every area of our lives. The Bible says when someone sins, they despise God. They despise God when they sin. So today we're going to look at what some have called one of the seven deadly sins. But we've just said that every sin is deadly. Regardless. And that sin is sometimes called sloth. Sloth. What is sloth? When people use that word or, or see that word, what is sloth? Well, in a lot of Bible versions, it's simply called laziness. It's just called laziness or sluggishness or indolence. The wise man Solomon talked about laziness a lot. Let's go to Proverbs 19. We're going to be reading many verses in Proverbs, so you may want to uh, keep your uh, finger there marked in Proverbs. Proverbs 19 and the 15th verse describes laziness this way. Laziness casts one into a deep sleep, and an idle person will suffer hunger. So here, laziness, sloth, is the avoidance of activity or exertion or energy, just not wanting to do it. The Bible depicts sin, depicts laziness, as a sin. It is something that will sever our relationship with the Father. And it will cause us to be lost forever. It's hard to believe in our society that someone would call laziness sin, but God calls it sin. In Proverbs 21, just a page or two over from where we were, notice the 25th verse. Proverbs 21, 25 says, The desire of the lazy man kills him. For his hands refuse to labor. Refuses to work. Laziness equates to a wasted life. God has given us abilities and resources and time. And to waste it is a sin. In Proverbs 18, the writer says this in verse 9. Proverbs 18 and verse 9. He who is slothful in his work is a brother to him who is a great destroyer. Is a brother to him who is a great destroyer. A person who is lazy destroys resources and opportunities and abilities and destroys time. Things they cannot get back simply because they were unwilling. They just didn't want to. So laziness keeps us from prospering. And one of the things we're supposed to do when we work is to help people who can't. And there are many people who can't. So one of the things that's, that's our responsibility is to work so we can help other people. In Proverbs 13, the wise man said this in verse 4. 13 verse 4, the soul of a lazy man desires and has nothing, but notice this, but the soul of the diligent shall be made rich, shall prosper, if they are diligent, whereas the lazy man will have nothing, nothing whatsoever. Proverbs 10 and verse 4, 
the writer says this, He who has a slack hand becomes poor, but the hand of the diligent, again, makes rich. See, we are to help others. One of the things that Paul told Timothy he was to preach to the church there, where he was, was about their responsibility. Notice 1 Timothy 6, verses 18 and 19. He's talking to those who have. Those who are rich, he says, verse 18, Let them do good, that they may be rich in good works, ready to give, willing to share, storing up for themselves a good foundation for the time to come, that they may lay hold on eternal life. So see, laziness keeps us from prospering and working so that we can help other people. God, when he allows us to work and prosper, expects us to help other people in one way or another. So those are the ideas that come from the Bible about sloth, laziness, sluggishness. We have some questions we need to ask ourselves. Sloth is characterized by carelessness, an unwillingness to act, a half-hearted effort, and becoming easily discouraged. Let's ask ourselves all four of those things. Number one, am I careless? Am I negligent? Going back to Proverbs again in Proverbs 6, we have a proverb about the ant. Proverbs 6, and we'll begin as well in verse 6. Proverbs 6, verse 6, and following. Go to the ant, you sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise, which having no captain or, or leader, overseer or ruler, provides her supplies in the summer and gathers her food in the harvest. How long will you slumber, O sluggard? When will you rise from your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. So shall your poverty come on you like a prowler and your need like an armed man. Am I careless in my worship? Am I negligent, negligent in my prayer, in my Bible study, in my speech? That's a sign of laziness when we're negligent. When we're careless. Number two, am I unwilling to act? In Ecclesiastes 10, again, the wise man Solomon had this to say in verse 18. Ecclesiastes 10 and verse 18 says, Because of laziness, the building decays, and through idleness of hands, the house leaks. Do I procrastinate? One more time in Proverbs. In Proverbs 20 and verse 4, <coughs> it says, The lazy man will not plow because of winter. He will beg during harvest and have nothing. Putting off, unwilling to act, unwilling to do. You know, some things cannot wait. Like having that conversation about, about with someone about their soul. Can we put those things off? No. I was hoping Victoria could be here today, but she's taking care of my mother because I'm getting ready to quote William Shakespeare and she would appreciate it. I have this quote right in front of where I sit at my desk at home in my study. This is the quote I have right in front of me. It helps me to not be lazy. That's why I have it there. There's a tide in the affairs of men which, taken at the flood, leads on to fortune. And then he says, omitted, this is what happens, all the voyage of their life is bound in shallows and in miseries. On such a full sea are we now afloat. And we must take the current when it serves or lose our ventures. I couldn't have said it better. That's for sure. Opportunities come maybe once in a lifetime. Taken at the flood. 
if we don't use those opportunities, if we put it off, if we procrastinate, it's like being in the shallows and being in miseries. We lose it. So let us not be unwilling to act. Let us not procrastinate, especially when it comes to those spiritual parts of our lives. The third question, do I do everything with a half-hearted effort? Proverbs 19 and verse 24. A lazy man buries his hand in the bowl and will not so much as bring it to his mouth again. Now that's about as half-hearted as you can imagine. This is something I tell my students in school all the time. Everything they do is like them painting a picture and signing their name to it. So do it with excellence. Do it with excellence. Well, if it's just, just a small little homework assignment, do it with excellence. I have a note in my sermon. Use Doug as an example. So I'm going to use my brother-in-law as an example. He has done so much work in all the houses we've owned, and we've owned a bunch of them over our time. And every one of them, I think, he's done work on. And I mean everything. I don't care what it is he comes to do. He does it with excellence. I mean, every little thing has to be just right. That's what I'm talking about. Everything we do should be like we're signing our name to it. This is what I do. It's not half-hearted. I do it with excellence. Then the fourth question, am I discouraged easily in the face of every difficulty? Now, difficulties come all the time. The Bible talks about a person who was paralyzed by difficulties. Jesus told this story in Matthew 25. I want us to read a few verses there about this individual. Sometimes we call him the one talent man. Matthew 25, and let's read verse 24 and following. <clears throat> Talking about the Lord coming to the one talent man. Then he who had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you've not sown and gathering where you've not scattered seed. And I was afraid and went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, there you have what's yours. But his Lord answered and said to him, You wicked and lazy servant. You knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed, so you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers, and at my coming I would have received back my own with interest. Therefore take the talent from him and give it to him who has ten talents. For to everyone who has, more will be given, and he will have abundance. But from him who does not have, even what he has will be taken away. And cast the unprofitable servant into outer darkness, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Why was he called unprofitable? Because he was lazy. He was angry. The Lord was with this man because he let fear keep him from acting. He says, I was afraid. That's, that's, those were the words he used. You know, I was afraid. So I didn't do it. So how do I guard against laziness? How do I guard against sloth? Number one, find, and I think this is the most important. Find your purpose in the church. Discover why you can contribute to the work of the kingdom. W whatever it is, discover what that is. Because it's hard to become lazy when you're motiv by, motivated by something much greater. Listen to what Paul said about that in Philippians 3. He knew all about it. In Philippians chapter 3, beginning in verse 12, Paul writes... Not that I've already attained or am already perfected, but I press on, that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do, count, do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Look to see what you can do. Number two, just don't quit. 
Don't grow weary in doing good, Galatians 6, 9. Keep on doing. Even if you are weary in doing good, don't quit. Keep on persevering. Be diligent in the way you work. In Colossians chapter 3, when Paul wrote to the church at Colossae, he told them this. Whatever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of the inheritance, for you serve the Lord Christ. He says that's what you need to remember. Think about all those people mentioned in Hebrews chapter 11, that great chapter of faith, that kept on regardless. In Hebrews chapter 11, we'll begin in verse 13. And notice what is said about these individuals. Verse 13, These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, were assured of them, embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For those who say such things declare plainly that they seek a homeland. And truly, if they had called to mind that country from which they had come out, they would have had opportunity to return. But now they desire a better, that is, a heavenly country. Therefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he's prepared a city for them. They kept on regardless. They kept on regardless. And the third and last thing, how to guard against laziness, do everything for the glory of God. Everything In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, Paul wrote to that church there at Corinth and told them this in verse 31. He says, Therefore, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, that includes everything, do all to the glory of God. So when this is our attitude, laziness will not be an option. He said much the same thing in Colossians 3.17. Whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Everything makes no difference what it is. Do everything for God's glory. So while the world may not think sin is serious, it may not think laziness is serious, God certainly does. How we live our lives matter. It all matters. The Bible says we're not to live for ourselves, but for our Father in heaven. That's what we're to do. Don't live like the world. The world tries to just get by. The world wants so many people in the world want the world to give them something for doing nothing. Christians should be just the opposite. We should be the best working, the most diligent, the most trustworthy of all people. Because we're not doing it for men. We're doing it for God. That should be our Christian's motto. That's how we live. That's what we do. And we do everything with excellence. Regardless of what the world says or does or thinks. With excellence. That's the way Jesus lived his life. That doesn't mean he worked 24 hours a day. He didn't. He rested. He went off and, and, and had to be by himself many times. But he spent his life doing things for the glory of God. And so should we. So when a Christian, when, when a person becomes a Christian by repenting and being baptized, they are starting on a new journey, a new lifestyle. One represented by doing everything for the glory of God. So while Doug leads us in this invitation song, help us, help each of us to remember our responsibility. And it might be the morning that some has decided to obey that gospel. And if so, we encourage you to come forward as we stand and sing this invitation song.